it's not often that we say this, but we came across our next story quite by accident. We asked our Adrian Arsenault to travel to northern Quebec to a vast remote riding to see how connected Canadians there are to this election campaign. She was supposed to fly from Chisasabi to Kujuak, but then something funny happened along the way. And that's how she uncovered a forgotten election issue. Heading north in Canada requires, of course, packing patience. And behold, patience. A plane load of understanding and been there before attitudes about a flat tire on a gravel runway en route to Kujuak in northeastern Quebec. You know, we call it Air Imaha, which means Air Maybe. <laughs> They're working very hard to get everybody where they are, but I can't uh, promise anything yet. Gotta go with it, right? Yeah, just go with the flow. Welcome to the north. <laughs> and welcome to a change in plans. For us, that means missing Kujuak and staying instead in Inukjuak, just beyond the tree line, right on Hudson Bay. Just as well, perhaps, because something's wrong here that's worth a real look. Fellow plane passenger Johnny Hasalowak offers to show us around. Inukjuak happens to be his home, and he happens to be the Green Party candidate in this riding, where issue number one in all this space is actually overcrowding. To a group of kids, he puts the question, how many live in your home? <laughs> Eleven people from three generations sharing only a few bedrooms in less than a thousand square feet. And that's not the worst of it. There isn't a home in this community that isn't dangerously bursting at the seams. It is shameful. It is wrong. Everyone, not just Inuit, need a safe shelter. And this is not safe shelter. The boots and coats and belongings of 11 people. Moses Idlut's entire family. His wife Emily, weak with pneumonia. Their grown children and sniffly grandkids, where they sit and sleep and eat. It's social housing. 80% of the Inuit rely on it, and it's desperately difficult to get. Idlut and his daughter both put in housing applications 15 years ago. The paper came back last week. It says to renew our form, to renew your application for a new house. 15 years ago? Yeah, yeah, in 1996. The waiting list only ever grows bigger, and waiting is hard. One bathroom for all, privacy for no one, making all the homes incubators for sickness and stress. Uh, the kids need to be alone once in a while, you know. They, but here, we can't. Yeah, really crowded. Claustrophobic cages, even more suffocating when it's too cold to find escape outdoors. I've known certain households when I was a police officer that have tendencies for violent situations because there are too many people inside. All made worse because the majority are now unemployed and living in conditions more cramped than any other group in Canada. Get it up! Get it up! Yeah! The dad with the lungs works with a non-profit organization that builds the houses. Says here in Nunavik, a thousand homes are needed immediately. But there's only the federal funding to build a few hundred over the next few years. That won't even dent the backlog. You need capital funding. Who's that supposed to come from? The federal government. And what have you heard from the federal government? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. He also says he's heard nothing particularly promising from the big parties this election. Suspects they don't realize how fast a problem is becoming a crisis. It probably doesn't look like it, and at minus 35, it really doesn't feel like it. But it is spring here, and within a month or two, all of this will start to melt, the ground will start to soften and heave, and the houses will ever so slightly start to crack. Homes age very fast here, and that makes the problem a crisis, because it's not just that new houses need to be built, it's that all houses need to be rebuilt constantly. So have another closer look at Moses Idlut's house. Moldy, rotting windows, constant water damage in the ceiling, bitter winds that blow through walls, and here, a hole in the drywall that was there when Idlut first moved in. 
These holes are yeah, like 20 because, years old. They didn't have time to rep repair them because as soon as when the house became available, we're moving here. We have 299 other units that require similar work. In a place so isolated where a single bottle of water is $8, housing supplies are utterly beyond financial reach, carpenters are rare, and so is help. Even Anukjuak's mayor and his wife Nunga are a family who must wait in line. As with so many, they are generous with their community, help each other survive with the basics, but at times they too struggle with housing their kids and all their grandchildren, most right on the living room floor. Four little boys sleeping down there. Four little boys here. Uh, and little girl. Little and, my, and my daughter sleeping at the little room. Patience is surely a staple of the North, but it's running dangerously thin now. If help is in the wind, they don't feel it. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, in Nukjuak. And there's another layer to this story. In the 1950s, the government forced families from Inukjuak to move thousands of kilometers north to the high Arctic, where they faced harsh conditions and received little support. Families were allowed to return to Inukjuak in the 1970s. The government has apologized for the relocation. 